Hey guys, what is up? Dave coming back to you with a new video. Basically, today's video is a start to finish tutorial for a friend of mine. I figured why make a private video for just my friend when I can make a public video that'll teach many people. So we're going back to basics. We're going to go back to setting up .NET Reflector. We're going to go back to downloading the APK from APK Pure. Go back to actually extracting the APK just using WinRAR or WinZip and modifying a game in .NET Reflexor with Reflexel. So I wanted to go in, start from the beginning of getting the APK that you need. So first of all, you're going to want to go to apkpure.com. This is at least the best website I've seen to do this with. And the game we're going to be using is No Limits Drag Racing because I feel like it's one of the easiest games out there to modify as there's no security about it. And you can really just do pretty much anything in the game. So we're going to do No Limits Drag Racing. And, oh, Pro Series Drag Racing. I'm sorry. I don't know why I thought it was No Limits. Whatever. And you're going to want to download the APK, which is right here. So download APK. It'll download for you, and I need to make a folder here. And then wherever you normally keep your modding stuff, just make a new folder called, uh, do I have a folder for Pro Series? I do not. So make a folder called Pro Series Drag Racing. Make a backup folder. And in the backup folder, put the APK. I have a lot of shit in my download folder. That needs to go. Once it's in there, don't ever modify this one. Just simply rename it like Pro Series 2111. Whatever the version number is, which, oh, well, too many ones, whatever. And then what you're going to want to do is copy this. Just put it out here. Make a folder called DLL. What you can do now is, if you have WinRAR installed on your computer, you can uh, just open this up with WinRAR. You can basically just go open with, uh, it may be here as WinRAR Archiver, or choose another app and choose WinRAR. I already have it set up, so it'll open up with WinRAR. But what you want to do is, once you have this open, you need to go through the Assets, Bin, Data, Managed folder. And in your DLL folder, copy all of these and extract them all here. Perfect. Now you're ready to start modding. So you're going to need to get .NET Reflector. I can't obviously tell you to like go out and pirate stuff. But as you can see, it is possible to still get. .NET Reflector has been my favorite tool ever since I started doing this stuff. You do have to pay for it. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell you to pirate anything, so that's not really something you want to do. And then the other thing you're going to need is something called Reflexel. So it'll be Reflexel.net. You're going to simply want to download Reflexel right here. It'll take you to GitHub, release version 2.2. I already have it, but the one you're going to want to download is for uh, Reflector2.2.io.bin. Open that up open the folder that's inside here you'll see this DLL right here when you are um, first open up dot net reflector do 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 I have something open in here I know I do yeah I don't need any of this open right now there we go you're gonna want to go tools add-ins and then click the plus sign. It'll take you right to wherever .NET Reflector is installed, and you'll see this add-ins folder. You'll see um, .NET Reflector right there, or the Reflexel right here, whichever one you need. It's right there. You'll basically just drag and drop this into that folder, and then you're going to want to select it and have it as a add-on right in here. And then you can close that .NET Reflexel or .NET Reflector's Reflexel plugin will activate by you simply going to Tools and clicking on it, and it opens down here. And then from there, you need the DLL file for the game. So in Unity 3D games, 
all the code uh, when they compile it into what's called mono de uh, mono compiling, um, where it's C sharp code into a DLL file, all the code for the actual game is going to be in the C sharp uh, assembly C sharp DLL file. So you're going to want to simply drag and drop that into .NET Reflector. It'll open it up. It'll find its required stuff because everything's in here. And you can just click the little plus sign, click the little plus sign. Every game and every programmer is a little bit different. There's going to be more in here compared to others sometimes. But basically, most of the code for games is just going to be in this little dash area. And then from here, you're going to want to go through, scroll through. You can see some cool stuff, like there's camera rotation, car camera, if you want to mess with the camera settings. A bunch of different ones, as you can see. There's the different heights and stuff like that you can modify the shake of the camera, stuff like that. Um, there's also car color you can mess with. If you know enough about actual scripting, you can actually like make flashing car color. Car controller, ABS, ESP, TCS, traction control system. I don't know what ESP is, um, but AES, ABS, anti-lock brake system, that's all in here. What I want to find, I don't want car, well, damage, I get now that's useless um there should be like car cost in here somewhere it's been years since i've dug through this game's code let's actually just find like player player level player cloud player progress you want to find money is what we're going to be doing here. Licenses, multiplayer races, unlock territories. This game is updated a lot. Race. Is there like a user function? You got to kind of scroll through every so often. You got to really look. Here's vehicle data. So if you go in here, maybe it's vehicle configuration. I want to find uh -huh -huh. maybe the price of cars is something we'll be able to modify. Let's see here. Add modification. Somebody messaged me. I don't know who you are. Oh. Let's see. This is the fun part, basically. Figuring out, basically, the stuff you're going to need to modify. So there's, like, get tune. tune ve or get vehicle by class has modification is nitro is nitro is valid I'm trying to see if I can find money <laughs> you can use the search function for this you can go like money or you gotta try different words basically coin So that's just a void. Buy gold, buy gold, buy gold. You don't want to buy gold. We want it free. Repair now. So this is a void. But as you can see, it's just a purchase status. Dino room, buy option. Int 32. Let's just search gold. Oh, if I could spell. Get gold. So game state. Got it. So is this like player loading and stuff like that? Yes, this is the player loading. Add XP. Add cash. Ah, so this is where it gets fun. 
so. Game state cash. Here it is. So if you want unlimited money in this game, there is a limit set right here that you'll see. Cash check did not match. You can remove all of that cash check. And it's what's called a, an int 64 or a long. What you basically do is scroll, click the top one, click the second from the bottom, right click, delete, and then you have just this return here. Well, now the game doesn't know how much money you have, so you want to create new. And as you can see, it's an integer 64. So you're going to want to scroll down in this list pretty far and R8 is going to be idc.r8 is or not r8 it's i8 i'm sorry i'm sorry i8 this is an integer 64 so it gives a little description of what it is and then from here you choose int 64 64 and just type in whatever amount of money so realistically in this game you only ever need like maybe 250 million so 250 one two three one two no, and a dollar and you want to insert insert before selection so now the game will always see that you have 250 million dollars so that's just for that now let's also add that you have unlimited dinos so scroll down all the way to the bottom actually what we can do is if you hold if you select all the way that I told you by clicking the first one clicking the second to last one while holding shift and then hold control and just click one of them you'll get this little thing up so it's you've got two left you can go in right click edit and then since this is an integer 32 it's an i4 int 32 and we can make this a thousand of them now let's do something a little bit more advanced in this video so you want to make it so gold gets added to your account let's actually modify the opcode without even going in and using edit or creating new or deleting anything so basically you're going to want to edit this sub in spend gold change it to add now anytime you buy a car with gold it will actually add the exp and then same with remove exp we can do add we can do um, any kind of spend thing we can basically change it to add and you'll just never run out of money or dinos all right, and then from there, you basically just look through, see what else you got. You can set it so you are actually a member. So do that. This, this is a true or false statement, as you can see by it being a bool. So we're going to delete all that and leave it as ldc.i4.1. Zero is false one is true there you go pro mod champion you don't want to set any of those things and remember that um repair cost let's make repairs let's do this one a little bit special so there is the ability to script your own hacks into or script your own code into this kind of stuff here so as you can see this is kind of a lengthy amount of code. Well, we really kind of want the cheapest amount, or the cheapest, uh, the cheapest um, repair cost we can get, but we don't want the server to detect it. Let's say there is security on this, but we don't want the server to necessarily detect it. So in Unity, there's a really cool randomization um, function that I really like that I actually I ripped it out of the unity source code and actually use it on my own so if you want to actually modify this without having to go in and delete all this and actually code in C sharp you can right click anywhere within the reflexal code box replace all with code 
change this to Unity Silverlight, hit Compile, see if you get any errors. If you get errors like this, then you're not able to script in this game. Um, you can try the other ones, see if they work, but you'll probably get the same thing. Yeah, you're going to get the same things no matter what. And as far as I know, there's no fix to these. So we can't, unfortunately, script in this game on this function. What I was going to uh, show you guys is how to do the randomization function. So first of all, you need to name your variable. So this is an integer in int32, so we can just use int. And then we'll do the word random. So this is the name of the number that's going to be randomly picked. Then you do equals unity engine dot random dot range and then you do one f comma ninety nine f close parenthesis not l there we go and then from here you can see that it's going to randomly select the number between one and ninety nine and then you want to tell it to use the random number right here, random. Oh, whoops, idiot moment. It's not going to allow it because we can't script in this game. I get this error, but that's normally how you would do a uh, random number selection. But because I can't do that, we're just going to set it as... Uh, the cost of one to fix the car and all in all honesty I'm just gonna select that one and we can change this to who know so now it only costs one coin basically to fix the car alright so we've modified a lot of the game let's go in and actually save what we've done and test it you want to go to assembly C sharp right click the very top reflexal 2.2 save as and then right in here, I recommend making a folder called modded so you don't accidentally overwrite your original C sharp file and just leave the word patch there for now. So you go save and then you're going to want to go to your folders. So modded is right here. You need to copy this so you can either right click, Jesus Christ, right click, copy, go back to your APK right here, open it up, assets, bin, data, managed delete the one that's in there paste your modified one and then rename it just basically remove the name patched and the other dot so now it is assembly c sharp dot dll that is your assembly c sharp now from here you can either leave it unsigned if your device is rooted and you go through Lucky Patcher in order to allow the installation of APKs that are unsigned or you can sign the APK. So we're going to copy this real quick. We're going to go to my one click signer which I think works. I had some problems with Java recently. You're going to want to double click one click signer which you can get very easily from XDA. Just search XDA developers one click click signer very easy just download it from anywhere and then you can download the attachment right here that's your one click signer now you're going to want to type in the apk name which is pro series 2111.apk give it a second it'll sign the apk now once it's re-signed this can be used on non-rooted devices as long as people uninstall the original um, APK first that they have from the Play Store. Uh, using the unsigned APK mean, on a rooted device means that they can just install it over an installed APK from the Play Store and save their game save. This way it's a little bit harder to save your game save. There's not really a way to uh, when it comes to re-signing the APK, unfortunately. The one nice thing about using one-click signer is once you get into some more advanced usage of um, doing APKs. You can always use a different key. You can figure out how to make your own key and use your own keys. I do have my own key, 
um, thanks to APK Easy Tool, which I'll go over in another video. Um, let me find my key. Where did I put it? My key is somewhere around here. It's in here somewhere. I saved it. I just don't know where it is. Dang it, mate. Where do you save the keys? Where do you save the keys, man? I know you have your key thingy signing. Oh, it is in resources. Oh, I didn't see it. So here's my uh, key store, and my sign2.pem is in here as well. My PK8 is in here. So I can use all that to sign it with the same signature every single time. So every time I update the mod, people don't have to keep downloading it again. But that's a video for another day that I'll go over. Let's go into actually installing this on um, Android. So first of all, I personally, when it comes to Android emulation on a Windows PC, I like Knox. Bluestacks just has way too many advertisements. It's not worth using really because of the advertisements. Um, I just get better results with Knox App Player rather than anything else. It has a lot of built-in features already, um, like uh, recognizing Xbox 360 controllers for games. You can actually modify things uh, for like hotkeys on your keyboard and set random hotkeys or your own hotkeys. Wow, that's a big file. Sorry, my ADHD kicked in. So that being said, yes, this also has its own ads, but they're far better than what Bluestacks used to have. So now you're going to want to take the signed APK. Simply just drag it into the window of Knox Player. It'll install it and then run it. And you'll be able to see your modified APK. So made with Unity, Pro Series Drag Racing. If you wanted to get really serious about it and really leave a branding, for example, you can find... There's a splash image in here somewhere, usually. I don't know where it is or what it's called, but there's a splash image. I feel like this game doesn't work on emulators. This game doesn't work on emulator. Hmm. I'll have to figure that out later. I'll try it on my actual phone outside of the video. But basically, that's what it takes to modify a game for Android. And uh, it's honestly not that hard when the... Um, original game for Android is actually DLL based rather than um, IL to CPP. Much easier as a DLL to modify everything and actually get into it. So if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section uh, and I'll try to get to them as I can. Don't ask anything incredibly stupid. I know you guys want the TechX hack pack back. The only problem is the TechX hack pack grew to such a size that I don't really know like how to upload it or anything like that. Like it's a much larger hack pack than it used to be. It's over 15 gigs now because of all the tools I've actually collected. I have all the different am I, I can get all the different emulators. I have the calculator APKs, I have the Java APK, the one click signer, um, Notepad plus plus. Lucky Patcher downloads, the JADX um, stuff, the IL to CPP versions, the IDA Pro is in there, but I can't hand that out because that would be piracy. Um, HXD, Game Guardian, FRP bypassing. This is for a specific phone. I can actually delete all these. It'll make it far smaller. There we go. Um, there's the flash tools, which I know there's stuff in here I need to delete that'll take that file size far down. But basically, long story short, this is like, in the end, it's about an 8 gig tool pack. And I don't really know how to share that with you guys because it's, like I said, 8 gigs. I don't know what to share or how to share it. But when I figure it out or if I narrow it down far enough, I'll let you guys know. I'll get a sinful hack pack made and we'll go from there. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys learned something. I'll talk to you guys later. Peace out.